When it comes to investing in sports cards, every sport has its own nuance. And with the football season right around the corner, I want to help you avoid common pitfalls and temper your expectations heading into the 2021 football season. Welcome back to another Market Movers video. My name is Tyler Nethercott, better known as Teapot. It was really great spending last week at the National. I ran into many of you. I got a lot of shout outs and awesome compliments and that was really kind of mind blowing and surreal. I'm really excited this week to be talking about NFL football, specifically avoiding pitfalls and tempering expectations. So I don't wanna take up too much of your time. Let's just jump right into this. So three things in, in particular that I wanna think about when, when talking about football card investing. One, this actually applies to all sports, but knowing your floor versus your ceiling, and I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit this week. In general, I like to look for investments with a high ceiling and a very low floor. In many cases, I like to know that my ceiling is two, three, five times higher than what the floor is on a particular card. And as we look at some comps with uh, notable quarterbacks, we'll kind of start to unpack what that means for this coming year. Second thing is injury risk. Obviously, you know, with any sport comes injury risk. We see it in baseball. We saw Acuna go down, unfortunately. We saw it in basketball where basically every single superstar and, and MVP and all-star player got injured in the playoffs this year. But when you think about injury, you're thinking about football, especially. And short uh, careers, in uh, careers that are derailed by injuries. So we're gonna think about injury risk going into this season. And then finally, the hype periods around football and what that could mean for the coming month or two. So first off, what I did was I ran a couple of charts in Market Movers, and then I sort of cropped their stats just so that we could look at the card and the ending average price for each of these cards. And in this particular example, what I wanna do is compare what I'm kind of calling the floor for these seven most hyped players right now, the seven most highly sought after quarterbacks from the last three draft classes. So if we're looking at 2018, 2019, and 2020 Prism Base PSA 10 cards, and I want you to pay a special attention to the population counts on here because market cap matters and market cap is something we're going to have in market movers very soon. But you can still, you know, calculate your own market caps. You can look at those prices and very easily see where all the money is spread out. Another thing that really matters when you're looking at older rookie cards, at older sets of players that came into the league earlier, the number of sets and the number of total rookie cards drastically lower than what it is today, where you have so many different products hitting the market, you know, different, different product every week, every other week definitely every month. All of those cards kind of come into the pool and form a collective rookie market cap for every player. And that's something really important to factor in as well. So if we look at this case, you know, Josh Allen, I sorted this from, from greatest to least. And again, this is Prism Base Cards PSA 10. Josh Allen at the top at $915. You know, obviously fantastic year last, last year. Josh Allen is big. He's got that kind of Ben Roethlisberger style body. He can move. He's obviously got a cannon for an arm. And last season, toward the second half of the season, he really started to turn it on and show that he's got some accuracy too and made that deep playoff run almost to the Super Bowl. Lamar Jackson, second on the list, won an MVP, obviously really dynamic player, had a down season last year by Lamar Jackson standards, still had a really good season, just didn't have the touchdowns that he had two years ago in his MVP campaign. You know, he's somebody that I'm wondering, what is he gonna do this year? I think, I don't wanna say this is a make or break season by any means, but I'm really hoping that Lamar Jackson can come back to life. Somewhat because so far to date, my biggest investment loss or miss has been buying a uh, Optic Hollow PSA 10 of his card for around $2,000 and it's down to like seven, 800 now. So that's been my single biggest investment miss I'm hoping that card can get somewhere at least back into the mid, you know, 1500 range so that I can look to, to move that and cut my losses if, if need be. Uh, Justin Herbert, obviously, uh, you know, the, the big rookie of the year last year, Joe Burrow, uh, who, you know, was injured. Surprising in my opinion, somewhat, to see Burrow higher than Kyler, although barely higher. And you got to factor in again, the population count at double on Kyler's, you know, cards over Joe Burrow. This set, you know, relatively new on the Prism stuff. PSA closed for grading, so that could be part of the reason why. 
And then Baker Mayfield and Daniel Jones down here. Daniel Jones way down at the bottom at 168. Let's compare these guys to rookies from the 2012 and 2013 season and think about what each of these players has done. So again, I'm kind of looking at these as like the floor. And if you look at these as the floor, it's a little bit scary. So let's walk through each of these players individually. So Cam Newton won an MVP, okay, like Lamar Jackson, made it to a Super Bowl, uh, unlike Lamar Jackson, uh, but not really winning the popularity contest anytime soon. So many of those instances of him sitting with the towel over his head on the bench, people just don't really like Cam Newton, generally speaking. He does have his fans, he has a lot of people who don't like him, and he's obviously had problems with injuries in his career. Colin Kaepernick, you know, Super Bowl appearance, appearance looked like the next big thing, was all over commercials that year. He was running for, you know, 200 yards and, you know, ha had this cannon for an arm. Obviously, and I don't want, I'm not trying to get into it or I don't want anybody in the comments to get into this, but he chose a path of social activism. And whether it's, you think it's for that reason or his performance or maybe some combination of both, he's out of the league. He hasn't been in the league. It was a very short lived stint for Colin Kaepernick. And yet, you know, somewhat because of this, I would argue, are his prices still up around $225. There's a market of people who want his cards for that reason and very, very low population on the PSA 10 Pop 25. So Colin Kaepernick, you know, another another one of the, the I'll say, star quarterbacks from that list of 2012 and 2013. Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill has had some really good numbers over the last few years. Very efficient. Uh, that's probably the best word to describe him. Obviously, a big run game behind him. And in his career, late bloomer. It took getting to Tennessee for him to really emerge. You know, he had some okay performances when he was in Miami, but, you know, coming to Tennessee has been a totally different story. And now, obviously, adding uh, some new weapons to, to throw the ball to. So it looks like Tennessee is going to have a really formidable offense this year. $170 pop 115 on Ryan Tannehill and compare that now to Daniel Jones $168 pop 2205 and Daniel Jones hasn't done anything just keep that in mind Kirk Cousins you know he was the big free agent you know chase a few years back when he decided to go to Minnesota has not been able to win the big games highly inconsistent problems under pressure um just ups and downs some weeks looks like you know one of the best quarterbacks in the league other weeks not so much and I'm a, I'm a big fan of Kirk Cousins I'm a Michigan State fan he's a West Michigan guy went to Holland Holland Christian uh, with went to school with some of my friends so I know about Kirk Cousins I'm rooting for him $85 for his population 106 PSA 10 tops chrome base card Andrew Luck now this incredible Obviously retired early, retired suddenly. $31. $31. None of these guys are anywhere on this list around $31. Now, imagine if any one of these guys doesn't turn out to be like not only good, but literally the best one amongst this list over time. You got to think that their cards are going to be going down. And that's where I'm thinking about floor versus ceiling floor versus ceiling where can i go from here is there a lot of room to go up from here at 915 dollars we'll see in a minute robert griffin the third man what a rookie season absolutely electric running passing efficient great quarterback rating that season rookie of the year and then that horrible injury sorry to our videographer charles big washington football team fan uh Robert Griffin III was never the same, and his cards are down around 30 bucks, just 369 of these. And Nick Foles, I call him the Robert Ori of football, maybe not the best comparison, but put him in in the clutch, put him in in a big moment, and he seems to really come through. Give him a starting job and expect him to play week to week, not so much. Kind of put Nick Foles and Ryan Fitzpatrick into the same category. I'm not sure what the deal is, and by the way, fun fact, did you know that Ryan Fitzpatrick has more career passing yards than Troy Aikman, Steve Young, and Kurt Warner. That just kind of goes to show you how different our league is today and how much more pass happy. Even Kurt Warner, obviously late start to his career before he was bagging groceries, 
um, but uh, greatest show on turf. He was throwing the, the ball for quite a few yards with the Cardinals as well. Still Ryan Fitzpatrick, more yards. So kind of take a minute and let this sink in. Look at where these prices are now. And imagine Josh Allen, who's a very similar prototype to Cam Newton and where this card could go. Josh Allen could win the MVP next season. Josh Allen could go to the Super Bowl and lose. And then Josh Allen could see his career trajectory start to slowly come down. And Josh Allen could see his card price come down to where Cam Newton's is. Josh, New Josh Allen could see this card come below Cam Newton's because his population is so much higher and because he has so many more rookie cards than Cam Newton did. Just keep that in mind. So best case scenario, best case scenario, what we're looking at here, all time great quarterbacks, some of the top passing leaders of all time. I didn't include Peyton Manning. I didn't include Tom Brady. I didn't include Aaron Rodgers. I didn't include basically the, the most you know recent kind of current players. It was Manning or Breeze, Breeze being a little bit newer into the league. Um, I put Breeze on here as a frame of reference, okay? So let's look at these players. You know, Drew Breeze, top three to five quarterback of all time. You know, Super Bowl, pop 444. He did not have a Topps Chrome base card that wasn't numbered. It was numbered, uh, I think just had the refractor numbered to 999, which is why I went for the Topps base here. Compare that and the price point and the pop counts to Josh Allen. Barely higher, half the pop count, top three to five quarterback all time. Matthew Stafford, Hall of Fame numbers. You know, one of the worst run franchises in history. So many seasons without any weapons. An organization that forced my favorite wide receiver of all time, Calvin Johnson, to retire early. And, you know, he's up around $762. Pop 999. Pop 589 here. Pop 1507 and growing on Justin Herbert here. Is Justin Herbert going to have a better career than Matthew Stafford? Maybe. If he has as good of a career as Matthew Stafford, that'd be pretty remarkable. If he has as good of a career as Philip Rivers, that'd be even better. Look at the price comparisons. Eli Manning, two-time Super Bowl champion and you know, uh, keep keep that in mind. Uh, you know, how many more I see those funny memes about, you know, the people who prevented Tom Brady from having even more rings on his fingers, right? So Eli Manning, two-time Super Bowl champion, eighth all-time in passing yards, $750, pop 122. Lamar, Eli, Herbert, compare these prices. Dan Marino, the best quarterback I mean, I think most would agree with that. The best quarterback never to win a Super Bowl. Top five to 10 quarterback all time, probably, depending on you know how much you pull on the older, older players and the newer players. Top five to 10 for sure quarterback that I've ever seen play. I did bring in his PSA 9, his PSA 10, much higher in value around 4,000, I think. But again, that's his rookie card. He didn't have 50, 100, 200 different sets and products and all the parallels and variations this is this is the card so you know 456 dollars population 3653 compare where the populations of the psa 10 and 9 2020 rookies are going it's it's probably not even going to be close philip rivers literally the modern marino threw the ball like dan marino and if you compare their statistics it's spooky and i would argue philip rivers is the best current most recent modern quarterback of the last two decades to not win a Super Bowl. You know, $272. Again, I don't want to belabor the point, but compare that up here. Matt Ryan won an MVP, fantastic season, Super Bowl loss, heartbreaker for Atlanta fans, sorry Atlanta team, and amazing career numbers. Population 464 on his 2008 Topps Chrome base, $218. So we're talking about being between Baker Mayfield and Daniel Jones. And again, I kind of compare Topps Chrome, you know, in terms of analogs to current sets. 
Maybe it's a better analog to uh, optic, downwards optic base. Maybe it's prism, it just depends who you ask. Maybe it's somewhere in between. But again, you kind of get the point. And Troy Aikman, three time Super Bowl champion, $124 on his PSA 10 tops traded base card. Compare that to Daniel Jones. I don't, what Daniel Jones will be lucky if he wins one Super Bowl. He'll be really lucky if he wins two, like Giants quarterback and all time great Eli Manning. Just taking this in, at the National, I saw a lot of people looking for Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, uh, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, all these guys, really. I heard all of these guys' names being said a lot at different booths, and there were a lot of their cards out. When I think about floor and I think about ceiling, I don't see much more of a ceiling on these cards. Not in the long term. And when I'm investing in players, I like to think about long-term outlook as well as short-term because the long-term view informs the short-term reactivity of the market. At some point, people kind of look, as we've seen especially with these ebbs and flows of vintage cards and Hall of Famers, I think people start going, wait a minute, whoa, why would I, why would I pay $1,500 for a base Josh Allen card when I can get a Drew Brees? for less than that, and the population significantly lower. And there's fewer overall rookie cards of those. So keep that in mind. I'm not saying these cards couldn't go up. In fact, some of these on the list certainly could go up. Baker Mayfield could go up to where Josh Allen is. He could. Um, if he has a phenomenal season, if he's an MVP, you know, top three, top four guy, and if the Browns win that division and at least make it to the conference finals, Baker Mayfield could see these prices go up. Um, he could also see his prices go down and Josh Allen could definitely see his prices go down more. All right, this is the all time, uh, all time leader list for wide receivers, active players. So active players, all time list. And I put this up here just to illustrate again, another point. And rather than going through and pulling charts for each of these players, I just want to kind of show this list and think it wasn't until last year that Larry Fitzgerald cards started really getting some notoriety and some attention. And I'm still kicking myself for not picking more up before, you know, that, that kind of happened because I sort of saw this coming. Top two, top three wide receiver of all time, just in terms of career numbers, right? Um, Julio Jones on a really nice trajectory in terms of career numbers. You start getting down into the rest of this list. Active receiving leaders. Antonio Brown cards, not expensive. Obviously, recent events, you know, domestic abuse, potentially all kinds of drama. Um, his cards are not expensive. Deshaun Jackson cards, not expensive at all. DeAndre Hopkins cards, somewhat pricey, you know, somewhat pricey, but he's having, you know, he's have he's he's arguably the best wide receiver in the league. Still should have a lot of years ahead of him. Um, AJ Green was at one point probably one of the most hyped, one of the three, four most hyped receivers in the league. His rookie cards are not expensive. T.Y. Hilton cards, rookie cards, like 30 bucks for a PSA 10, uh, Topps Chrome. Manuel Sanders, nobody talks about, but he's had a really nice career. Gronk, obviously the championships, the, the antics, you know, the, the, the great touchdown numbers. Jimmy Graham, not expensive at all. And you can just keep going down this list. Jarvis Landry, you know, has had a pretty good career so far, seven years into the league. Brandon Cooks as well, both really good numbers so far, ahead of ODB from the same class, by the way. And yet, their numbers, it's funny, their their cards are not are not as expensive as Odell Beckham Jr., not even close. And um, not expensive, I guess, I think Jarvis Landry around $25, $30 too. Jump over to, fo uh, jump over to the running backs, Frank Gore, number three all time in rushing yards amongst anybody. 700 yards behind Walter Walter Payton could pass him this season. And Adrian Peterson, in my opinion, I would rank Adrian Peterson top three running backs that I've seen in my lifetime. Barry Sanders being one, and I would probably flip a coin between Ladanian Tomlinson and Adrian Peterson at two and three. Um, just in terms of performance overall, consistency, and at their peak, 
absolute dominance with the football. LaShawn McCoy, you know, and Peterson, again, his card's, you know, somewhat expensive. I want to say, you know, three, $400 for his PSA 10 Bowman. Um, LaShawn McCoy card's not expensive at all. Uh, at all. I think uh, a PSA 10 blue refractor of LaShawn McCoy rookie card just sold for like 100 bucks. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, again, not super expensive. Mark Ingram, not expensive at all. Lavian Bell, not expensive at all. And you're kind of going down this list. And then, I mean, you start getting into this this territory where it's guys that people have completely forgotten about. Alfred Morris, Todd Gurley, obviously that incredible, uh, incredible season. And then the injury, the knees. Lamar Miller had some good years. Derrick Henry's, you know, kind of coming up through his still really young career. Nobody cares about the rest of these guys. They just don't. And so, um, you know, when you're thinking about running backs, if I, you know, receivers and running backs, temper expectations, you know, floor and ceiling, and then think about the hype period and the injuries. And I just use these four players to illustrate, okay? Christian McCaffrey, Ezekiel Elliott, Michael Thomas, Saquon Barkley. These are four players who were unanimously in everybody's top 10 pick list last year for fantasy football. And correspondingly, the hype around these players that was going into last year. And what I want to point out here is, in terms of prices, relatively flat through July. Now, we were just at the National. We were here. I heard a lot of people asking for football cards. And maybe those are sort of astute buyers, right? Astute buyers who are saying, I'm going to buy here because I know what's coming over the next month. Last year, the NFL season started on September 2nd, right in here. High point was right that first opening weekend. And then it was all downhill from there for almost every single player. Almost every single player. Guy like Derrick Henry, not so much. He had an incredible season, and I think his numbers were up at the end of the season, but they weren't as hyped going into the season. But when you have these players who are hyped, and you can use, I mean, to a certain extent, you can use fantasy football as sort of a, a resource to look at that. Who are guys really high on? Who's expected to perform? There's a hype period, and then it's coming down. And I would expect the same exact thing to potentially happen this year. So when we look at all these players, you know, Saquon and Christian McCaffrey both got injured the second season, uh, sorry, the second week. They were both injured. Um, and, and that was pretty much a wrap on their season. Do you want to get caught sort of holding the bag? Then you have to make a decision. Do you sell low? Do you hold them going in, you know, for a year? Um, just be mindful of this period and expect that there's probably going to be a big sell-off in this period as people hit the, hit the opening, you know, opening day for the season. And just be aware, all four of these guys either dealt with injuries, including season-ending injuries, or just underperformed and you could argue that Zeke's was you know partially because Dak Prescott got hurt and then you know the teams were, were loading the box and saying go ahead and try to run against us um, we're gonna make you throw the ball and the last thing I want to do is take you over to the price movements and kind of see what's been going on in general with players now over the last 365 days <clears throat> another reason why investing in Josh Allen right now would concern me his prices are up this, since this time last year, 241%. Baker Mayfield's up 70% since this time last year. Dak Prescott's back up. Maybe that's smart because he was injured and his cards were down somewhat. Sam Darnold's up. I'm personally not putting any money into Sam Darnold. Again, I've said in the past, I don't really believe in him. Mahomes up just 14%. And when you look at this list of players and what they've done and where they deserve to be, Maybe that's because his starting, you know, baseline before that, before you know, prior to these 365 days, was even higher. But as we move, you know, into last 180, Baker up 58%, Daniel Jones up 55%. So this is basically since the end of the last football season, right? A little bit after the end of the last football season, after the Super Bowl, and we start to scroll down. You can see Josh Allen still up, Lamar's up, and I, I do think Lamar should be up. It dropped more than I expected it to last year, um, and he had a he had a relatively solid season. Kyler stuff is up, and then you start coming down, and you can see um, Saquon, 
Christian McCaffrey is still down over the last six months, keeps scrolling down, and Mahomes down 31% uh, since losing a Super Bowl, right? So he's in his second Super Bowl, he wins one, he loses another. That's, I mean, his, his resume of all those players so far warrants the most attention. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this season if he puts up another MVP caliber season. Justin Herbert, obviously there was a lot of hype down. And then, you know, if I start to look at the last like 30 days, Deshaun Watson cards are starting to come back to life. Um, CD Lamb, there's been a lot of buzz around him and people expecting him to have a big season. Same thing with Delvin Cook. Same thing with Clyde Edwards Lair. Um, but overall, you can see that in football, there's more cards positive now and trending up over the last 30 days than down. If we come to the last seven days, same kind of thing, I think. So, you know, some players flat some players down but just keep in mind where have the prices been and where do you think that they're going I kind of give you some of my insight it's not to tell you specifically who to buy what to buy you have to do your own research and that's the big thing that we promote but trying to inform and help you know temper expectations around some of these players and just think about how much room they have left to grow before the market's gonna go wait a minute relative to other players current relative to other players in the past how do i want to use my money how would opportunity cost factor into this and use that to inform the decisions that you're making as well all right a little bit longer video than i anticipated i guess i had a lot more to say than i thought but hopefully that was you know informative this is something that i i like to go through with the process and think about it really take a minute to look at those price movements see where the players have been see where they're going and um really you know step back pump the brakes a little bit and, and be very realistic. And, you know, we always talk about diversification. Not a bad idea to diversify yourself with some vintage, with some Hall of Famers, with some blue chip players, and then to get into the current market to those players that maybe are down, that people are sleeping on a little bit. And then you could potentially buy into a few of the players who are already somewhat hyped if you think that there's opportunity for their cards to grow. If you're interested in market movers, you can visit marketmoversapp.com or you can download our app on the Apple Store, or you can download our free app, which is on the Apple Store and Android. It's absolutely free to try it. If you like it, you can sign up for a membership, and you can always use our Sports Card Investor app as well, which is completely free, no membership needed whatsoever. Hey, like I said, it was awesome seeing so many of you at the National last week. If you're watching this video and you saw me, leave a comment down below. I'd love to uh, you know, continue the conversation. And let me know what you think about this. Who are you high on this year? And uh, like this video if you would, please. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so you know when the next video drops. As always, happy investing.